Scrolly telling is truly one of the most satisfying mediums that I've found to composite graphics, animation, and text without making a full-blown movie for some complex story that needs all of those elements. If you don't come from a front-end development background, you might get scared away from Mapbox's tutorials and their templates. The truth is, it's not that easy to create a map that is customized to the degree that you might want with something like Mapbox. And that's why a lot of people reach for ArcGIS and they reach specifically for story maps when they're trying to do a story that integrates geographic details along with text, along with graphics. And it's just this multi-layered ordeal that is incredibly exciting as an idea. But when put into practice, a lot of times with ArcGIS story maps, I found myself pretty frustrated with hitting a creative ceiling. And so I designed this tutorial for you to approach Mapbox in the easiest way possible, not waste your time with ChatGPT like I did, and walk away feeling like you can impose this structure on lots of projects to come. <laughs> prepared, you're going to need a laptop or desktop computer. The next thing that you're going to need is a code editor. I like to use Visual Studio Code and you can download it using the link that I put in the comments. Another thing that I suggest is that you set up a GitHub account. A free account on GitHub will allow you to better organize while you're going through this project so that you can save the code on the repository as needed. That is highly suggested that you create a Mapbox account. This is going to allow you to stylize your map. And lastly, you're going to want a story. I have provided my own obsession, which is currently about private tech cities. And when I heard about Prospera, the idea of billionaire tech bros collaborating on a private community with their own governance and legislative guidelines sounded like science fiction. So I decided to delve in, see if there were other cities, and the Mapbox scrolly telling template seemed like the perfect vessel to tell this story. The first thing that we're going to do is create a Mapbox account. I've already created an account. I'm going to go to my account. From there, I can create an access token. I'm going to name it private cities and there doesn't need to be any secret scopes and let's create this token. So I have a token now. We will keep that for later. You can save this somewhere else if you don't want to keep this tab open. Um, but I'm going to from here go to map box rolly telling and from here we have an intro about scrolly telling and the interactive scrolly telling template is this link let's just go ahead and go to the interactive storytelling template start building and from here we're going to click on the src file we're going to click on the config.js template and copy the raw file from here we're going to open up our code editor and do a new text file and this is our javascript file and we can just simply paste that there so i already have a config file so this is named var fig for the variant and yours will just be a config file it's important to note that so that you can access it in your HTML file and you know that you're pulling from the right file. And now I'm going to create a new file and this one is going to be HTML and I'm going to go back to the GitHub repository to the storytelling SRC file. Click on the index.html file and I'm going to copy the raw file that into my html file so i'm going to call this index 2 and save it to my mapbox private cities folder if you haven't already made a folder i suggest that you make one so that you can keep track of all of your images so this is already giving us problem for me 
it kept running errors when it came to the maximum scale. So if you are also encountering errors, I have some code to impose in the head portion and then that should fix it. So now it's meta name equals viewport content initial scale equals one width equals device width. We're going to access our access token by going back to our web page for our Mapbox account. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard and put it into the access token slot on our config template. Another thing that you're going to want to do if you're using Visual Studio Code is define the language and all you do for that is lang equals en English, unless of course you're doing this in a different language. And from here, I'm going to test out my website and just see what this template looks like. If you haven't already done this, I suggest that you download a live server and you can do this by going into view extensions and look up live server install and here I've already installed it so I'm just showing how to enable it for your website trial and error and here it is so far so this is the template and it's quite cool so what we're going to do to alter this to our desires is of course changing the title of the story and we can do that in our config file where it says title and we're going to say rise of the private tech city and a subtitle and you can add your name in the byline elizabeth we're not going to add a footer yet and now we can get started with our chapters for this i had quite a bit of research in private cities there's very few fully autonomous cities that are separate from national governments. And there's a couple that kind of fall in the middle ground. So those are the ones that I'm going to be featuring and some special economic zones as well, which fall into a special category where they're not entirely privatized. I'm going to find the coordinates for my first city and my first city is Prospera in Honduras. And I have a file devoted to all of the images that I found. From here, I've designed some descriptions. Okay, let's give this a go and see how it looks. So I'm going to run and dispose my port. It did manage to post my image and I have my pin in the correct location, but I'm gonna change the zoom so that we can see it a little closer up. And let's change the zoom to 13. Let's save that. We're in quite a close up spot. I want an animation. All I have to do to create a more dynamic display here is where it says rotate animation, I'm going to say true. All right, now let's save that. And here we go. This is starting to look pretty good, but I want my map to look more like the image that I'm seeing. And to do that, I'm gonna get the satellite imagery. So I'm going to open Mapbox and we're gonna access the styles by going into the styles API. And I simply want the Mapbox standard satellite. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and paste it into my config file and press save. And here we go. So as we can see, now I have my satellite imagery it's really crisp other than looks like part of Honduras is not mapped that's all right as i scroll down i'm gonna see that we have great imagery for the rest of the world i'm gonna start building out my other chapters to do that i'm going to go into my config file i'm going to locate my chapters and for the sake of this example, we're going to be pulling from my data. The next city that I'm going to be featuring is called Nome. It's also been referred to as The Line. It's a futuristic city that is being built in Saudi Arabia that is a horizontal and vertically built city beyond what I think most people would be able to imagine. So I have an image for this. I'm gonna copy the path and paste it here and save we need the right coordinates let's watch our map go 
to Saudi Arabia. I want this to be more zoomed in, so I'm gonna change the zoom to 12. And as we build out the other chapters, I'm gonna walk through some of the aspects of the chapter building template so that you can edit and make changes on the specific details. The alignment is referring to the alignment of the text and image block. So that's going to be available for left, center, or right alignment. And when we're talking about the pitch, that is the camera angle. So the angle towards the horizon, and you can set it between zero and 80 degrees. You can also select the bearing to choose which compass direction on the map is up. For example, bearing, 90 orients the map so that east is up. Another detail that might cause a hiccup is not changing the ID. So while you're getting towards the end of the template, you're going to be adding more chapters potentially, and maybe you're just changing the title. You need to change the ID as well for it to actually register this new chapter. So make sure that you number them accordingly. In this segment, we're going to go through some of the special features that I wanted to add to my map to really make it stand out. One of them was the exaggeration on the DEM. So this took a little bit for me to figure out where to place this. There's available code on the Mapbox website, but it's not in reference to this HTML template. So I've included where you can place the exaggeration code within your HTML script so that you can make pointier mountains, make them look a little bit more immersive. In this part, we're gonna walk through a custom element that took me way longer than I would like to admit. As I mentioned before, if you're coming from a GIS design UX background, it's not necessary that you were using HTML to begin with. So no worries if this is a bit of a weird thing to navigate. So I've included where you can put this custom panel into your script. And the function is basic. This was to feature a different metric that I created, which was the autonomy meter. I thought that this was necessary to show how each of these cities range within their degree of autonomy. So we're going to start by locating the inset. This is in the template and the inset is the map that you're going to see on the left side of your screen on the bottom part if you mark true on inset in your JavaScript. So scroll down and we're going to create a new function that is initiated upon scrolling. So we're calling the function update new panel content and outlining what is going to be within new panel content. And we're going to first start by defining the constant, which is new panel. And from there, we outline what the inner HTML is, which means what components are going to be in that panel. And you'll see h3 id equals title two and I named it autonomy meter h3. So the h3, if you're not familiar with HTML, is signifying the font, which would be defined in the upper part of your HTML script. Inset into that is going to be the image and description. Scroll down and to initiate this as the map moves, we're going to put our update new panel content function underneath on step enter. With each chapter, this is going to call a new panel. So I define my new image as image two. And this variable is going to be what you put into the JavaScript to call a new image. Thanks for watching this tutorial. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to post them in the comments. I would also love to see whatever projects come out of this scrolly telling template. If you're interested in engaging more with the field of information design, which is the intersection of UX, graphic design, and data visualization, follow this channel and stay tuned for more tutorials.